Hey there, hope you're having a wonderful day. In this video, we're going to go over function templates or generics in C++. So function templates allow us to define functions for different types without having to rewrite the same code for each type. So this is part of reusability when it comes to writing functions. So let's say I want to swap two variables. Here I have a swap function defined and it takes in two integers and we use a temporary variable to store the value of A and then reassign A to B and assign B the value of A, which is stored with this temporary variable. So here I have an example. I have A is 5, B is 10, and then I print the value of both A and B, and then I call a swap on these two variables, and then I print the values again. So if I save and run the program, you can see before we get A is 5, B is 10, and then we call a swap, so A is 10 and B is 5. All right, so we have a swap function that can swap two integers. Now, what if I want to swap the values of two variables that are not integers? So for instance, what if I want to swap two strings? So let's say I have string s1 is equal to apple and the string s2 is equal to orange. And I want to swap these two variables. So I would have to create a swap function. So first let's print out these two variables. So S1 and S2. So if I want to swap two string variables, then I would have to create a new function because this function only accepts integers. So I can copy and paste this. And in the previous video, we went over function overloading, otherwise known as polymorphic functions. So polymorphic functions allow us to create functions with the same name, but different parameter types. So here I can change this to string and over here as well. And then over here, I would change this to string. Okay. So now down here, I can call swap on S1 and S2. And let's print out the two variables after the swap. So let's save and run the program. And you can see we get apple and orange. And after we swap these two variables, we get orange and apple. All right, so we have another swap function that will swap the values of two string variables. Now, what if I want to swap two variables of another type, such as character or Boolean or even double maybe? Well, in that case, I would have to write five functions. And the only difference is the type over here. So here you can see I have int in these three places, two in the parameters and one over here. And here I have string in the same places in the parameters and in this temporary variable over here. So what I can do is I can generalize this function so that I don't have to write the same function with the same exact code over and over again for every single type. So I'm going to get rid of this function. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a template. So here I would write template angle brackets. And within these angle brackets, I will write type name. And over here, you would specify a generic name for the type. So usually in C++, we just use T. Or you can type it out. You can say type. Or you can write generic type. It's up to you. But in C++, we generally just use T because this stands for type. So now that we have this template declaration above our function, what I can do is I can replace these types here with the generic type name T. So I can put a T here, a T here, and a T here. So now if I save and run the program, you can see we can call the swap function for two integers or two strings. So this is how we can use templates to generalize our function parameter types so that we don't have to rewrite the same code over and over again for different types. And sometimes instead of type name, you might see class. And there used to be a subtle difference between class and type name. But I think after C++ 17, type name and class are used interchangeably. You can use either one. Uh, generally, I think it's more common to write type name. So we'll stick with that. And when you are using generics, you can also specify the type for your parameters. So since swap is a generic function, you can just put in the type here. So I can say this is calling swap with integers for T. And over here, I can say this is calling swap for strings. So if I save and run the program, you can see there is no difference. We just swap the values of the variables. So this is optional. We don't need to do this because C++ will figure out the type. So this is just optional if you want to note to yourself the type that you're using. 
But yeah, again, this is optional, so you don't have to do it. All right, so that's one example where you would use generics or templates. In this case, with the swap function, we don't really care about the type. We just want to swap the values of two different variables. So this can be applied for any type. And another example where we would use function templates or generics is when we are working with vectors. So here I have two vectors. One is a vector of strings and the other is a vector of integers. And I have a print vector function that takes in a vector of strings. And this is a const reference. And if you don't know what this means, I have a video on const reference and I'll link in the video description. But basically, this print vector function can only take in a vector of strings. So if I save and run the program, you can see it prints out the vectors of strings, cities. So we have New York, London, and Paris. And if I want to print out the vector of integers, I can't use this same function and pass in numbers because we'll get a type error. So what I can do is I can use a template. So I would do template type name, and I would just call this T. And in this case, it is a vector of strings. And over here, we have a vector of strings and a vector of integers. So we would put the type over here. And now we have a vector of a generic type. So now if I save and run the program, you can see we can print out both vectors, even though they are vectors of different types. All right, so that's how you can use templates or generics when you're working with vectors. Now let's say I have another function that takes in two vectors. One is a vector of strings and one is a vector of ints. And I want to return the total size of these two vectors. So here we have three strings and over here we have six integers. So if I save and run the program, you can see we get size nine. Now what if I want to call this function, but I want to flip the order. So maybe instead of passing in cities first, I'll pass in numbers and then cities. So here you can see we'll get a type error, and that is because the first parameter has to be a vector of strings, whereas the other one is a vector of integers. Now with a function like this, we really don't care about the type. We just care about the size. So I can create a template. So let's do template type name. And here we have two different types. So the first type I would call T, and for the second type, I can call it U. So it is pretty common to just use U because U comes after T in the alphabet, or you can do T1, T2, like so. Either way works, but I would just use U and T. So over here, I will switch this to T, and the other one, I will switch to U. So now we've generalized the types for these two vectors. So if I save and run the program now, you can see it doesn't matter which order we pass in the parameters, we get the same value, 9. And just because we've declared two different type names, it doesn't mean we can't pass in the same type. So for instance, let's say I want to pass in numbers twice here. If I save and run the program, you can see we got 12. Okay, so that's how you can use templates to generalize your function types so that you can avoid writing the same exact code over and over again. All right, so that's it for this video. If you found this video helpful, make sure you leave a like. If you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. And if you want to stay up to date for more C++ tutorials, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.